somebody sent me a spreadsheet and it's got a messy formula in it that we're going to look at and make a better version of. Now, I'm going to take you through my thought process and how I work to fix these kind of things. Okay, we're going to look inside the formula, get an idea of what it does, and then think of a better way. One thing you're going to notice, and this is important for you to get, because I am going to work with the concept of the mechanism that's required. I am not going to use this person's data. I am going to just get the idea of what's needed and get a functioning mechanism. Basically, I am going to make somebody an excellent cup of black coffee, hand it off to them, and they can put in whatever sugar, cream, cinnamon, chocolate, vanilla, whatever they want to put in it or not put in it. That's up to them. But they will have a good cup of coffee when I'm done. Okay, let's look at the problem and the miscreant formula. Here we have some data up top here, some calculations are happening. And then we have our variables that we're changing. And this is the miscreant formula. Open this formula bar a bit to see how big this really is. There's a lot going on. We've got five ifs. We've got several choose functions. Now, here's a trick to dig into a formula and get it to look in a way that we can start to make sense of it. Here's an if. I'm going to go to the next if. Alt, enter. Next if. Alt, enter. Next if. Enter. Then the last one, Alt Enter. Now it's saying, if E10 is equal to zero, then zero. E10 is here where it says package A. If it's not zero, then we have to look at these other variables. So it says package A right here. And let's look at something here. There's a 50. There's a package A and a one. Let's go back to the formula. Here is a 50. So what it's doing is if A3 is equal to package A, then choose amongst 50, 85, and 95 based on what's in D17. And D17, there's a one. So it's picking the first variable there, the first number. What happens if I change this to package C? I've got a 200. There is a 200. That's A5. So I don't have to go to data tables to get an idea of what's happening here. So let's step back and get an idea of what this person is trying to do. They're saying if E10 is equal to one of four variables, then look at this evaluation number and look at the intersection. Let's change this to two. So now we got a package C2. There's a 205 right there. This person wants to do a two-way lookup. That's what we have to get working. Also, this evaluation, this two doesn't mean anything. The two is not doing any math for us. We really want basic, moderate, difficult. That is the other variable in our two-way lookup. We want package 
and we want the level of difficulty. That is a matrix that we can set up and clean up this big miscreant formula. But look, you know me. You know I'm a fan of going rogue. This person got the answer that they wanted. I don't criticize this person at all for nesting all these if statements together. It is an example of being able to if your way to glory, if you know how to use an if statement. And that's fine. But we're gonna look at an easier way. Now here's what I warned you about. I am not gonna use this person's data. I'm not gonna fish out all these numbers. It's 50 to 165 to 210s. I'm not doing that because I am going to focus on getting the mechanism working. Let's do it. Here, I have set up a simple model without all the other stuff that was in that other spreadsheet. The goal is to get a product range value out of this matrix based on these two bits of data. So I am just gonna make up some data here. Okay, let's do equals rand between, and I'm gonna put uh, six and 30, okay? Let's make up some data. Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna center all of this stuff, yeah and put this into a table, format it as a table, and I feel like this today, okay. And I need to get rid of these variables here, copy and paste as values, and I don't wanna look at these filter buttons in that table. Let's make some drop-down lists. Basic and our data is coming from here, basic, moderate, difficult. Here we go. Make data validation. Want a list. Ignore blank. And I want that coming from here. Okay. There is that drop down list. Let's make this other drop down list. List, ignore blank. Uh. Here we go. Okay, there's our drop down list. All right, so I can do, let's say, C. And at C and basic, I want 22 to show up right there. Here's how I'm going to do that index match match equals index. I'm pulling my data from here. This is my array comma, match, because now I got to tell it a row number, but I don't know the row number. The row number is going to be which package is selected, A, B, C, or D. All right, comma, match, open parentheses, lookup value. That is the package there. Comma, lookup array here. That's where I want to look for package C. And I want to put a zero for exact match. Close that match function, comma. Now it wants the column number, but I don't know the column number. I have to use match to get that. Okay, match, open parentheses. The lookup value is D4. I've got to type that because my formula is sitting up there. D4, comma. Where do I want it to look for it? I want it to look for basic, moderate, difficult. That is my lookup range. Comma, match, exactly. Close parentheses, close parentheses, enter. Boom, there is our 22. Let's play with this, okay. Package A, 20. Difficult, 14. That's what we wanted. So now, you've got two ways to do this. 
you can nest ifs five deep or you can do the index match match. It's not so important if you weren't able to follow the whole index match match and the table nomenclature. The big thing is to show that here's somebody who got an answer with five nested if statements. It worked. But it can be hard to build and hard to troubleshoot. Think about setting up a matrix or a lookup range when you realize this is a two-way lookup. Index match match is there for you. So please leave comments. Let me know if this worked out for you. If you have questions, it'd be great to have you subscribe to the channel and keep in touch with me. Let me know what kind of other challenges you have with working with data. See you in the next video.